Yep. All right, for today, we're going to be reviewing both the iPad 3 versus my brand new Google Nexus 7. That is this model here, which I really am liking. I've been playing around with it for the last couple of days. I love, number one, the size of it. As you can tell, the main difference between these two, then I'm going to go over the things that... Uh, the advantage, in my opinion, of the Google Nexus 7 is the size. I think that's a huge advantage. Also, the speed of it seems to be maybe a little bit faster even than the iPad 3. Now, you can look at all the specs, but I'm just speaking from a layman's perspective. The iPad 3 is a little bit bigger. It's heavier. It's bulkier. I like to do a lot of reading on my tablet and browse the Internet, both of which seem to be a little bit improved on the Google Nexus 7. Now, the disadvantage, the con, if you will, would be the size for some folks because maybe you want a bigger screen. The resolution isn't as clear as the iPad 3, which has the Retina display. Also missing is a rear-facing camera on the Nexus. The Nexus only has a front-facing camera, which is adequate enough for doing things like Skyping, for example. Of course, you need to be hooked up to a Wi-Fi for that. Now, just to compare a couple of the applications to show you some of the speed of the two devices um, and how the Google Nexus performs, it's a brand new device, has a uh, quad-core Terra 3 processor, and I'm just going to tap on both the camera icons at the exact same time and show you how quickly each of them pull up. So, boom, there it goes. Well, it looks like the iPad won that time, but honestly, I've been doing it a few different times this morning, and more often than not, it seems that the the uh, Google does end up winning. Now the Google here, this one also has the home screen. It's digital at the bottom, so it doesn't have a convenient button on the bottom like the iPad does. And then uh, I'm also going to cl uh, click on the browsers. So the uh, Google uses Chrome as its default browser. Here's some of the internet browsing experience. If I click on both of those, they both pull up rather quickly. This one I already had set to Dexter. I had to check out that last that last video but anyway these are uh, both pretty quick when it comes to the internet and um, I've been more than happy the other thing I love about the software here I uh, frequently go to the National Weather Service page on the left hand side is uh, are some of the uh, buttons uh, some of the tabs if you will and uh, if I go to it on the on the uh, iPad National Weather Service um, this is just one example so if I go to the National Weather Service on the iPad which um, I'm not pulling up here. Hang on. First of all, the typing is the other big problem I had. The typing on the iPad, you can see it's spaced out. It's tough to type. This one is super easy. You can type with your thumbs just as you would a cell phone. As, as you can see, it's just a little bit bigger than a cell phone, as a matter of fact. But the size of it is still comparable. Here's a book, a farmer's almanac. You can see it's about the size of a page. So that's why I like to read off of the Google tablet. It's lightweight, fits in one hand. Now the tabs here on the National Weather Service page, you see if I'm on the, pad, on the iPad and I go to click on it, I hope to hit the right tab. Often I'd miss. On the Google, the software, once I hit it, it says, which one do you want? And it, it uh, blows it up and magnifies it so I can make sure I click on the tab that I want. Love that feature. It's been very handy. This will play Flash with you can, you can load Flash on one of the browsers on here. Uh, it doesn't come standard, doesn't come stock, but you can get that very easily if you have any knowledge about computers whatsoever. Anyway, that's a little review there. I do prefer the Google, but others who want a bigger screen, more clarity, and a rear-facing camera might like the iPad a little bit more.